Well, exciting and new ways to get yourself back into the swing of things in the new year, which has just begun. And of course, most of us, I think, are digging in some very, very empty wallets right now to get through to the rest of the month. But luckily, we have renowned financial planner and author of the book Smart Women, Sylvia Walker, is in studio to help us start the new year on the right foot financially. It's great to have you back in studio, Sylvia. How are you? Happy New Year to you. Thanks, Kakletu. Same to you, and thank you for having me back. And I wish I could say Happy New Year to myself, but I, I the, the, the the festive season has hit me hard and I've, I've, I've spent all my money and now I don't know what to do. No, I'm joking. It's not, that, it's not that bad yet. It's not that bad yet. But I think a lot of people have certainly yeah. overspent over um, the, the, the festive season because it's, you know, when the feeling comes around, you want to enjoy yourself, you want to reward yourself uh, for the past year's hard work that you've put in. So where do you suggest the first financial step be taken to in order to recover from uh, potentially overspending in the festive season? You know, it's interesting to me because people seem to do this over and over again. It's mm -hmm. a pattern that repeats itself. So um, if you're sitting at the moment with this hangover, this sort of financial hangover, as we say, <laughs> you know, that, that's really what yeah. it is. Yeah. It's the spending hangover. Mm -hmm. um, you've got no money at the moment. You're probably buying groceries on credit um, and just ticking over, waiting for that, that payday, that paycheck at the end of the month. Um, you just actually need to bite the bullet at the moment and hang in there. But the point is that you've got that credit. You've got that, that debt that you've incurred you need to then work at paying it back. And the risk one runs with overspending in December mm -hmm. is that it can snowball into something bigger because you've now owe some money, so you're going to have to pay back that money. So your cash flow is compromised, so mm -hmm. you go into more mm -hmm. debt. So critical for me is to make a plan to pay off that debt, but then to still actually work out your budget so that you survive financially every month going forward. Yeah. Just, just treat that as a short-term problem, sort out that problem, but then move forward. Don't let it snowball into something yeah. bigger. Because you know what a lot of people do, click, click, what sorry. Do they, do? they actually go into debt over Christmas, they sort of pay it back, then Easter rolls around, okay? Easter weekend, we got to go away. Um, then they go back into debt. And then it, it becomes, as I say, this constant, this almost way of life. Yeah. And, yeah. I want to take it a step back. So you talk about making a plan to pay off the debt and treat it as a, as a short-term problem. But let's talk about practical steps. What are the things that you can do right now to cover that debt? Does it mean necessarily, let's say, digging into your savings to cover that debt so that you yeah. don't incur interest that might then roll over into things like the Easter weekend, like other family occasions coming up? Or what, So what do you think are the practical ways in which you can do that? You actually just need to have a plan in place to pay it off. So I don't, don't think one should dip into your savings necessarily, because the risk with that is once you dip into those savings, how do you catch up again yeah. with that? Saving is an entirely different thing. Um, Really, you need to just say this is, let's say it's credit card debt that you've yes. incurred, which is probably the most common thing. Mm -hmm. Pay that off, but don't spend further on that card. Let's say you've accumulated 10,000 rands worth of credit card debt mm -hmm. over the festive season. Pay that off, but don't, because what will happen is you'll pay the card and then you'll go and spend on it again. Yeah. You, and yeah. you're caught up in that cycle. You know, and I always say jokingly that anybody who lends you money, they lend you money because they're making money out of you. It's not because they like you. So the more, the more <laughs> you spend that. and the more you pay back, the more they're going to give you. Yeah. So make a plan, pay off that debt, but don't incur further debt on that card. Yeah. Brilliant plan to start off the year. You don't want that kind of debt that you made in December to ruin the rest of your financial year. To snowball, year. to get bigger and bigger. Yeah. Absolutely. Let's quickly talk and, and tap into your book, Smart Woman. Um, yes. And it is a book that is aimed specifically at women. Yes. And, and why is it that you've chosen to write a book like that in, in the sense that what are the unique financial problems or challenges that women experience that men don't necessarily experience? You know, that the challenges aren't that different in mm. terms of, I mean, money is money. Money knows no gender. So whether you're a man or a woman, the issues are the same. But I think women traditionally have been often left out of the whole financial services industry. So it's, it's obviously changing and there are some great strides being made, but often women are the neglected ones. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I, I, when I was doing the research, I came across some, some sort of statements such as, you know, we support women from a financial point of view in widowhood and divorce. So it's not just in times of crisis mm. when there's no man around that a woman needs to take care of herself financially. It's from day one. Mm -hmm. um, and from a woman's point of view too, they often get left quite vulnerable because we have this mindset that maybe someone will take care of us. Yeah. So that's really why I wrote a book for women, talking to women about issues that impact on women and what the financial implications are. And how to be financially independent, yeah. how to have that freedom. Brilliant. It's not about marrying right. It's about doing it right for yourself. I love that. Yes, it's not about marrying right. No. It's, never, it's never been. It's never supposed to have been about that. But thank you very much. We'll tap a bit more into that and then also talk about in the new year, how do you set up your new budget to give yourself that financial freedom that you'd like to have. So Fantastic. we'll keep Sylvia here with us. And uh, if you have any questions, ask them uh, on our social media pages using hashtag Expresso Show. It's my feel good breakfast show. It's my feel good breakfast show.
Welcome back. This is your Feel Good Breakfast Show Expresso on SABC3. This morning, we have the pleasure of uh, having Sylvia Walker here with us. She's, the, of course, the author of Smart Woman, the book that helps uh, ladies out there take care of their finances. And she's here to help us to plan our financial lives for 2018, hopefully into a very pros uh, prosperous one. And so let's start off at the very beginning. Let's say you realize today, Sylvia, that you need to make that financial move towards prosperity. So you need to have some kind of budget, and it starts today. What do you do today? The thing is that budgeting is all to do with human behavior. So mm -hmm. when we talk about moving towards a point of prosperity, it's a case of actually saying, I need to manage my money properly. Mm -hmm. As we were saying earlier, everybody always wants to be rich. You know, we always, this is the goal in life. I yeah. want to be rich. Yeah. I want a retired 40 kind of story. You're never going to get there if you're not managing your money right today. Yes. And that's what the budget is. The budget is simply a tool that helps you to see where you're spending your money and to see what behavior you can change. Mm -hmm. Because you're never gonna get to the point of prosperity if you're not managing what you've got properly. Mm -hmm. The other thing is people often have this illusion that I need to earn more. So, you know, there's only two things you can really do to increase your prosperity. That's to change your behavior in terms of how you work with your money mm -hmm. or to get more money. To okay. earn more money. Yeah. And we often fall into that trap of thinking, I must get an increase, I must ask my boss for a raise, I must get a job with more money. So you live on that kind of hope system, um, when in fact it's much easier probably just to change your behavior around your money. And that's what the budget is about, is mm -hmm. changing that behavior. And really, it's like taking a snapshot. I always say it's like taking a selfie of your finances. Um, you have a look and you see exactly what you're spending your money on. And yeah. you need to be quite disciplined. So it's good to keep track and to see, okay, this is what I'm spending it on. And then you can decide and see what behavior you need to change. Yeah. Because there are money wasters everywhere. I always liken it to a bucket okay. of water. So on payday, your salary goes into this bucket, right? You fill your bucket with water. Yes. There's lots of holes in that bucket. So you plan what are you going to do with that bucket, but there are lots of holes where money seeps out, water seeps out. Okay. And those are the things that often catch us. Yeah. So by properly budgeting, you can say, okay, fine, these are the things, the money wasters, this is what I can eliminate. Yeah. So it's, I, a, it's a tool. Yeah, I really want to dive into this just a bit more specifically. Is it something that you do then on a daily basis, whereupon if you go to a retailer and you, or you go and shop for groceries, you need to have... Uh, you know, a measure of that and document it some yeah. way. How do you go about it? Is it a monthly thing? The is thing it a is, yeah, the thing is it can become, you, you also don't want to become a slave to it because True. if it becomes like a, a whip that you're going to, you know, whip and it's going to, it's going to be something you're forcing yourself to do, you're mm -hmm. going to stop doing it because yeah. it's boring. So it's it's really a case of documenting, mm -hmm. starting out and saying, this is what I'm planning to do with my money. Okay. So the first step is actually to say, what am I actually spending my money on? Mm -hmm. Because it's a Look at your food. household, think about all groceries, of this think stuff. about the, yes. the lights and the yes. water and all so of So you may need to keep some track in the first month to just actually do that. Yes. There are some apps available out there, and some of the banks actually also offer you that facility. They kind of break your spending down into... Within the banking app itself? Yes, okay. yes. Groceries and electricity and whatever. So yes. they kind of break it down, but that's often not very... It's not 100% accurate. Yes. But as I say, so once you've got that budget, you can then see what behavior, and we can talk a bit more about that later, what you can eliminate. Um, but then in terms of keeping track, it's sometimes quite difficult. So let's say you budget, there's certain expenses you have to pay every month. You've mm -hmm. got to pay your bond, you've got or your rent, you've got to pay transport, certain fixed things. But there's all those funny little money wasters. Mm. There's that cash that you have in your, you know, you draw a bit of money and it's gone, or you swipe that card for that cup of coffee. So those kind of things you need to actually keep track of. All right. Well, we're going to plug those holes very shortly as we delve deeper into our conversation about financial prosperity in 2018. Investments, those kind of things. What are the kind of investments you can make now that you can sustain for a year to come that will give you prosperity in the future? We'll be speaking again with uh, Sylvia in a very short while. Right now, it's time for the news. It's my feel-good breakfast show. Welcome back to your Feel Good Breakfast Show Express on SABC3. Sylvia Walker, financial planner and author of Smart Woman, is still here with us. And we're talking, we're wrapping up our financial chat for 2018. Let's talk investments quickly. What is the easiest way to start an investment today that you can hold on to that'll, that's sustainable, that'll be good for you? So investment is a whole minefield, as we know. And mm, yeah. we have the B word, which has just been mentioned, Bitcoin, <laughs> which of course is on everyone's <laughs> lips. But I think the important thing with investing is that you must decide, if you decide to invest an amount, make it an amount that you can afford. Mm -hmm. Because often people say, wow, I've got to follow this thing, or I've got to invest money here, and then they overextend themselves. So any investment plan is a long-term view. It has to be a long-term view. 
um, and we haven't got time now to talk about Bitcoin because that is a whole discussion yeah, on its own. A day on itself, <laughs> yeah. uh, it is absolutely, but it's it's long term view. And my, my most important thing for me is select an amount that you can afford. So if it, even if it's only two hundred or three hundred rand a month, yeah, because then you'll be able to stick with it. But if it's if it's too much, if you overextend yourself and you run into hot water, you'll end up stopping that investment and you'll not actually achieve anything at the end of the mm -hmm. day. Yeah. Where to invest your money? There's a wealth, as I say, a wealth of opportunities, a wealth of options. All depends on why you want to invest, what your investment horizon is, um, and there you really need to get professional advice. Is it, very quickly, yeah. is property an investment? Yes, absolutely. If, Still you, if, you, if you do it right, we're very fortunate in Cape Town that the property market has been rocketing in Cape Town. Um, it's done very, very well. So that obviously is, doesn't hold true everywhere. Yeah. Um, but you need to do your homework right because if you're going to invest in property, you want to be a landlord, hopefully rent it out. You're using the bank's money to grow your own wealth, which is a very clever thing to do. But you need to make sure you get your numbers right because you may need to subsidize that in the first couple of years. Mm -hmm. cool. So it's again about just crunching the numbers and making sure you understand. That's a critical thing. Understand yeah. what you're in for. Awesome. Right. Thank you so Thank much. You Thank, much. You Thank you very much. The book is called Smart Woman and it is out and available right now. Get yourself a copy, Zoe. And we really appreciate having you here, Sabia. Thank you so much. Pleasure. Thank you for having guys, me. That's the awesome. show. Thank you very much for joining yeah. us, guys. It's been a fantastic oh, Wednesday. We'll do it all over back. again. Mm. Yes, tomorrow. It's going to be an exciting show. We've got lots coming up. We've got Zumo, Cindy Abrams. Mm -hmm. I'm sure Zoe's going yeah, <laughs> to pursue that. that. Graham is chatting to, um, <laughs> to yeah. Yeah. the director of the commuter. That's mm. going to be exciting. And it's also about exotic pets into the wild. What? I wonder if we're going to have some exotic exciting pets. critters in studio. Yeah. yeah. I hope so. Interesting. Can't we just stick to the dogs and cats? Anyway. Uh, Have a wonderful Wednesday, everybody. See you tomorrow. Love you. Bye. 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 Adios.